cannot wait to see these because if you guys follow anybody else who uses Bootstrap Farmer, you'll know that they are colorful and I am excited about that. <gasps> Whoa, guys. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm in my basement at the farm in my grow room. And today I'm going to be using some new pots that I just got in to pot up my perennial baby's breath. Now this is a plant that I'm gonna be planting and hopefully establishing here at the farm. Okay, so my tray is a little sloppy because I accidentally watered overhead <laughs> and I spilled out a soil block. But this is one tray of the perennial baby's breath and I have a second tray right here, a little bit cleaner. I didn't um, overhead water this one like I did the other one. And then I also have some perennial lamb's ear that I also want to pot up. Normally for my cut flower farm, because of the number of seeds that I grow and the number of seedlings that I plant out, I'll leave them in the soil blocks. But these perennials, I want to get these as big as possible. And the more room that you give them to grow, the bigger and healthier they're going to get. So I'm going to pot up these perennials into some new bootstrap farmer trays. And guys, these trays are super impressive. Oh, the color and it, what really impresses me is the sturdiness of the tray. This is a tray that you're not going to have to replace. I'm squeezing it. Squeeze, this is like literally as hard as I could squeeze. And look at the size of that. That'll be easy to get out when it's time to plant. So because they're so sturdy, you don't really squeeze them to get the root ball out. You can just poop, poke your finger right up. <laughs> Actually, this is a perfect fit for me. It's like having the perfect bowling ball. Now these trays, these are super cool. These are the air pruning trays that Bootstrap has been talking about. And guys, I have Bootstrap farmer trays. I have a couple dozen that I've bought over the years and they're always my forever trays. All right, so I was just debating over what color to use, but I'm an orangey girl, so I'm gonna grab the orange pots and the orange tray, and we're gonna pot up this baby's breath. Look at my messy table, guys, and their brakes are not on. The table's on wheels, so we'll see. Oh, we'll see how I get it to stay still. Let me grab the tray, and then I'll grab the little baby plants, and we'll pop them up. Here they are, little cakes. Take a look at how deep these cells are. Now this is a four cell. They also come in individual cells, and they also come in six cells. Super rigid. Another thing that I would use these for, starting my sweet peas, because they have such a deep cell and sweet peas, they have a deep root, I would totally use these. Maybe I will do that too. Here is the muddy tray of perennial baby's breath. They are started in soil blocks. I started them back in February uh, and with my mom, you guys, I posted that video of my mom and I starting seeds. Ooh. Table's moving, I leaned on it. Well, you can see the root system here, guys. It's, um, let me put my hand up. There, you can see the roots dangling right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in a cell and we will see how they take off after being bumped up. It truly does, you, your plant will grow to its size um, depending on how big its pot is. Ooh, this one has two in it, I'm gonna leave it. They can fight for whoever wants to take over in that one. I'm probably gonna need another, a second try. And now I'm just taking that little itty bitty soil block and just pushing it down in the soil and the roots will just take hold over the next week or so. And then they'll be nice and sturdy in here. I probably won't be able to plant these out for another month or so. They're gonna have plenty of space to get nice and big in these cells. I'll show you some of the other trays that I have that are bootstrap farmer trays. I mean, years ago, I bought their 72 plug trays and I still have them and they are still rock solid. 
all of the other tr plug trays that I have purchased since then have either broken or broken. All of them. These wee babies. I've actually never grown perennial baby's breath before and I want to thank the viewers who sent me these seeds. A couple of you guys sent me some seed packets uh, because the packet that I had on order was out of stock. I shared that with you guys. I have started to fertilize these seedlings. You guys, you, you ask me that all the time. I, in years past, I had used the Neptune's Harvest and this year I'm trying something a little bit different. It's called uh, from Wallace Wow. It's just a seaweed fertilizer. I'll probably share those details with you in um, like a, a grow room tour. Which I'm hoping to do next week because things are starting to look quite good down here including these perennial babies. He had pretty decent germination on this. another doubler. All right, I'm gonna see, I got the lamb's quarter and the baby's breath. I'll see how many I could fit in this tray and then I'll put another one together. Hmm, I'm thinking maybe, let's keep it Syracuse colors. Let's go orange and blue. Really excited about the perennial baby's breath. I'm not sure how it's going to do in my area. It is a perennial in my zone, but I have never grown it before. Now this is part of the perennial patch that I am putting, perennial patch that I'm putting <laughs> over where the lavender died. I have five rows of lavender, 150 feet long, three different varieties. One of the varieties has come back again and again and again and again and again, and it's amazing. But two of the varieties, they really struggled to get through winter two years ago that we got down to negative 27, which is not all that unusual for our area, but we just happened to not have any snow cover when it was that cold. So I lost a lot of lavender. So I want to fill in those holes because I have DeWitt cloth on the ground with holes burned every 30 inches for the lavender. So I want to put something in those holes that is perennial that can stay there. Number one, I want it to be deer proof. And number two, I want it to be pretty carefree. And from all I'm reading about this perennial baby's breath, it's both. Okay, here is one tray full and ready to go. I'm gonna put it under the lights over here on my shelf and get another tray ready. And this time, we're going with blue. Can you even make your trays to match your eyes? Mm-hmm, jolly good time. Yip, yip here, yip, yip there, fa la 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 la. Oh, man, this table's just, I think the brake's locked on the one wheel. All right, back here with some tray action. Okay, I'm gonna finish up, fin I can't even speak today. I am going to finish up the baby's breath. It's fantastic. Brad's actually home today and we are getting ready to go on a road trip. So excited. And uh, actually, I'm gonna take you guys with us on the road trip, so stay tuned for that. Very exciting. I'm actually in talks with Bootstrap Farmer to possibly get some of their products inside my retail store in the village at the nursery. So that'll be exciting because I know a lot of people like to actually, you know how everything's ordered online these days and you know, to physically touch something. There's a difference between physically touching and seeing the durability of something and ordering online. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the durability of these products are so impressive that I can't wait for my customers to come in and actually see and feel these trays and know for themselves that they're getting real quality stuff. So maybe eventually I'll have a nice bootstrap farmer display at the shop. If you guys want to take a look at these trays, um, I'll put a link in the description of the video below. It's going to take you right to their website and it'll fill you in on all of the other products that they offer. Lots and lots of trays. Look at the roots on that one. Okay, this is the last baby's breath. I'm planting these lamb's ear now. So the lamb's ear, I'm not going to be able to fit all of them in this tray, I don't think. So we will see how many I get in here. Let's count it up right now. Just go one, two, let's get these. Okay, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> So I have leftover lamb's quarter, lamb's ear. Lamb's quarter is a weed that tastes like spinach. It's actually pretty delicious. Lamb's ear. I'm gonna leave them in these soil blocks, okay? I'm gonna clean off the rest of the empty blocks and there are one, two, three, four left in this tray. This will be a good comparison to see the size difference between something you leave in a soil block, which is perfectly fine, but let's see the difference and how it grows when we pot it up to these cells. So we'll have a little bit of an experiment going on here. And so we'll come back here in a few weeks and we'll check up on the progress of the growth. Kind of going, trying to take my farm in a more, um, not completely eliminating the annuals because that's obviously not gonna happen for my bouquets, but I'd like to get as many perennials established as possible. And you guys know that I started that process like five years ago. And so the peonies, I, this is gonna be their fourth spring for a lot of them, not all of them. Some of them are only a couple years old, but I mean, believe it or not, I started this process like five years ago. So some of the things like the hydrangeas are gonna be three this year. And a lot of the other things like the daffodils, they're also, this is their fifth spring. Um, so that's really exciting that we have, you know, a lot of things that are naturalizing really just fields of perennials and then we i can fill in the gaps with annuals i'll always grow zinnias i'll always grow things like status and you guys know my favorite flowers rubecchia rudebecchia <sighs> but if i could get as many perennials as possible that would be amazing okay guys now these trays are something i'm going to be using in Oh, my table's on the move. I'm gonna be using these in just a few short weeks when I start sowing my tender annuals for the farm. Now these I'll be using in addition to soil blocking because these guys are the same idea. They're air pruning trays, which is the benefits of soil blocking. So it has air slits on all of the cells on multiple sides so that your roots instead of circling and circling and getting bound up in here this provides an optimal growing condition for a stronger start you can get healthier roots using these trays i'm excited to try them i have not tried these yet i've heard about them i've seen other people use them and bootstrap farmers sent me these trays to try them out i'll probably be starting things like my gomfrina in here i have the benefit of a lot of space down here i have one two three four five six seven Eight. I have eight huge shelving units with lights and everything set up here. So I have a lot of space. So I'll be utilizing all of these and I love all the colors and I have um, matching bottom trays as well. And these ones are the individual pots and I would use these for things like peppers and tomatoes. If you're only doing a few of each variety, this is an amazing size. It's really deep, a really good size for starting your own healthy seedlings at home. So if you're not doing mass quantities like I am, I'm doing literally 10,000 seedlings for the season, maybe even more, I lost track, I don't remember. And if you're looking to only, like I'm, I'm squeezing this as far as I can, and it's barely budging. If you're looking for durable, nice seed starting equipment, Bootstrap has you covered. Ah! Here are the babies in their new home. I'm gonna get them a little bit of a drink and then uh, check on them twice a day like normal. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. That's how we plant the baby sprouts in the jolly old land of the basement.